Hello everyone and welcome to the forest. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and we're back in the woods for another botanical adventure. There is a lot of cool stuff blooming in the forest right now. So come on, let's go see what we can find. <laughs> Check out the size of this plant. One of my favorite arums of all time. This is the green dragon, Arisema draconchium. I can't get over how beautiful this specimen is. It's huge, in fact, it's so big it almost can't keep up its own weight. Now this is an aeroid, and here are its flowers, although they don't look like the showy flowers we expect out of a flowering plant. Like all arums, they consist of a spathe and a spadix. But unlike Jack in the Pulpit, its cousin, the spadix of this plant erupts outside of the spathe and continues upward, giving it this weird, bizarre quality. Now, it is a cousin of the jack in the pulpit, but it's been found that genetically it's more closely related to Asian species than it is other members in this continent, making it kind of an oddball for this group. If you look really closely at the flowers, you'll find out that individual plants are most of the time either male or female. Males tend to be smaller and females tend to be larger plants. And it has been shown that individuals will actually change their sex over time. So throughout the lifetime of this plant, as it gains more and more energy, it can produce more and more flowers that are female because female flowers require more energy overall to produce. And of course, seeds take a lot out of a plant. So only the largest plants that you find, probably this one, if we looked close enough, are females. This is such a cool plant and I think it's one of the most special species to come across this early in the summer. Unfortunately, it's losing ground and throughout a lot of its range. The very fact that there's a lot of these plants around tells me that this forest wasn't as heavily disturbed as some others. It tends to disappear if too much soil disturbance occurs. So this is a really exciting find and it tells me that this forest is a healthy one. Check it out, the box elder to the left of me has a nice vine growing in it. It's a member of the genus Smilax, and I think Smilax gets a bad reputation. There's two types of Smilax. There's the thorny kind, which are your green briars and your cat briars, and then there's the non-thorny, smoother kind, which are lovingly referred to as carrion flowers. They get that name because the flowers tend to smell like rotting flesh. It's all in order to attract their pollinators, which are carrion feeding insects, such as flies, which are looking for usually a place to roost and lay their eggs, but instead they get a bunch of flowers full of nectar. It's not really a good nesting spot, but it does produce berries. And eventually, those berries will go on to be a very important food source for animals such as birds. You can't underestimate the importance of berry-producing vines such as this. It's also a very damage-resistant plant. For anyone that's ever tried to control them, you know what I'm talking about. They can take a lot of hits before you can totally knock them back. So they're a great early successional species, especially in edge habitats where a lot of birds like to hang out. So I urge you to reconsider getting rid of that Smilax vine growing in your own backyard. Check it out. Right beneath me here is one of the coolest, most bizarre looking orchids in North America. It's the purple twayblade orchid, Liparis liliifolia. It's a very different orchid. It's got this large labellum, which is kind of transparent, but also a little bit meaty colored. And the rest of the flower is pretty reduced. The sepals and petals are very thin. And uh, the only other part that really stands out is this weirdly large column. The paired leaves give it the twayblade name. And the purple, of course, refers to the lip. But not much else is really known about this plant. Plants arise from this kind of underground bulb-like organ each year, and they can kind of migrate around. Surrounding me is a lot of young individuals, which is really encouraging that there is, there's a proper fungal community around here for this plant to germinate and grow. There's not a lot known about what pollinates this orchid. Some speculate that the uh, red coloration on the lip entices flies to pollinate it, but until more people spend time around this plant and observe pollination in action, it's gonna remain a mystery. This can be really sensitive to browsing, so finding it in this little open patch is super exciting. It tells me that the deer and rabbits are not overpopulated here, but as soon as you get too many herbivores onto the scene, these plants quickly get wiped out. It's a really exciting find, and it's great to see there's a lot of recruitment going on in this population. Awesome plant. Well, I hope you enjoyed yet another fantastic botanical adventure. We saw a lot of great stuff today, and there's plenty of more on the horizon as the summer ticks on. 
So if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and check us out on all of our social media accounts. We are literally everywhere, just Google it. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy hiking.